Okay. We're going to do an activity today. We're gonna to do, you could call it a craft or you can call it an activity or an experiment, whatever you want. You need uh, five things. You need a piece of cardboard or a piece of corrugated plastic or, or something that you can poke holes in and it won't be a problem, okay? So you need something that you won't mind poking holes in to put under a piece of paper, and that's the second thing you need, is a piece of paper. So it's best if the piece of cardboard is big enough that the whole paper can fit on it. You need a, a pin or a thumbtack or maybe even a small nail would work. Something that you can poke through the piece of paper with and, and poke through the other material with, whether it's cardboard or plastic or whatever. Then you need a string and a pencil. The thinner the better on the string. If it can be, if it's too thick, it might be hard to work with, okay? So those five things. Right now, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can get those five things. Okay, so now if you have these five things, then you can try to follow along and you can pause if I'm going too fast. If you don't have these five things, that's all right. Uh, you can try to just watch the video and, tr and, and try to draw what we draw as best you can without using these materials. And then you'll see maybe the difference between what we do with these materials and what you do without them. And you'll see just how cool it is to use these materials. So that's okay. You can do them with, you can do your own version of this experiment without these materials, just trying to do it with a piece of pencil, uh, a pencil and a piece of paper, okay? All right, but for those of you who do have it, and even for those who don't, you should watch the whole video. Okay, so take your string and curve it over like this, okay? You don't have to do anything fancy, it's just curved over, right? Curve it over, and now with that curved over end, just tie a regular knot in it, okay? Now this can be a little bit tricky to loop it back through itself, but I think if you try a few times, you might be able to get it. If you can't get it, maybe you can ask your mom or dad to help you. Let's pause and look at that a bit closer. So the way, the easiest way to tie a loop in a string, I think, is to make a loop first without tying it, right? Just make a loop and then Tie a knot with the loop. Tie a knot with the loop. Like that, see that? So I just you tie the a knot with the loop now. We've got a nice loop on this end. Okay, hopefully you could see that a bit better. Okay. All right. Now, let's take the other side of this. Uh, so I have a really long string. Maybe you have a short string. It needs to be long enough to tie, tie at least one of these loops in. Um, but it, shouldn't, it doesn't need to be very long. In fact, I don't want all this extra stuff, and this is a piece of string that I'm gonna throw away when I'm done. So I don't care about cutting it. If you're gonna keep your piece of string and you're worried about, it, about cutting it, and you just want to untie the knots at the end, that's okay. You can leave the, the extra pieces on the end. That'll be no problem. Okay, so on the other side, uh, your string should be between four and 10 centimeters, between four and 10 centimeters. So something like between, I don't know, here and about here, okay, uh, somewhere, somewhere around there. So it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but here we go. I'm gonna make my string about this long. So wherever either your, the other end of your loop is, that's about how long your string will be. It'll actually end up being a little bit shorter because you tie a knot, but that'll be about how long it is. So you see that now I've got this other loop. I haven't tied it yet, but I've got this other loop and now I'm gonna Again, with that end in a loop already, I'm going to tie a regular old granny knot. The reason we're doing this isn't because it's uh, 
the super best loop. If you have a, another way of draw, making a loop, that's okay. You can make a loop however you want. I just think these are nice, sturdy loops that are really easy to tie. Well, easy compared to the other ways of tying loops. There are harder ways of tying loops. This is the one that I think is the easiest, even though it still can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Okay, um, I've gone ahead and cut off the extra, but again, you can, you can just use this part without cutting off the extra if you want. All right, so now I've got my string with my two loops. I've got my pencil, my pen, my paper. Now, I'm going to draw a dot on this piece of paper, and I'm gonna try to do it in the middle, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be just near the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a dot right there. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Now I'm going to take one of the loops of my string and I'm going to put it over that. And now I'm going to poke through with the pen, through the loop, and then through the paper, and then into the cardboard. Now you want to be careful. You don't want to push really hard because it could still scratch the table. So you got to be careful. You don't want to scratch the table. So I'm going to poke it down through there, but not super hard because I don't want to poke the table. This would be ideal, it would be really good if we had lots of cardboard, but I only have this one piece. So my pin, you can see, has a lot of extra pin sticking out. And that's okay, it just means that it'll be a little bit harder, but that's okay, we can figure it out. Okay, so, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna put the tip of it through the end of the loop like that, okay? Now, once the pencil is through the end of the loop, you gotta hold this down with your finger, and I'm gonna, I, see I haven't touched the pencil to the paper yet. I'm gonna bring it over here under my finger. You can't really see it, but I'm moving it under my finger so that I don't have to lift my finger, otherwise my finger will get in the way later. So I'm starting it under my finger. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna keep the string tight. I'm gonna keep the string tight. And I'm going to go around the pen while keeping the string tight. And we're going to see what happens once I've done this all the way around. And now maybe you can see why I started under my finger. Because if I need to hold down the pen with this finger, then I have to get underneath it with this, with the pencil. Oh, and I didn't even finish it yet. But that's okay because I can just come over here. As long as I hold the pin in the same place, it should be no problem to just finish off this paper, this circle, nicely. Okay, so it's not perfect because I had to lift my, my hand and I maybe move the paper a little bit. But look at that circle. Does it look good? It doesn't look perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. It looks a lot like a circle, right? Now if I had done a bigger mistake, and the pin had moved a lot, then our circle would look kind of like this and I'd have a, a big gap here. So anyway, you gotta be careful not to let the pin move or otherwise you end up with something like this. Now, to compare this circle with what would happen if I tried by hand, I'm going to try to draw a circle as best I can, about the same size. I'll even draw a center point for myself here. But I'm gonna to try to draw a nice circle. Okay, now that's not too bad, but it's definitely not perfect, right? This has a big bulge out on this side, a little bulge out on this side. This part is kind of flat, right? And there's, there are all these little bumps in it because my hand shakes a little bit, right? So that, compared to this, I think it's obvious that this new trick we're trying makes a nicer circle. Okay, now I've gone ahead just for, you don't have to do, you can just do it one time, but I've made a smaller string too, and we're gonna use this smaller string. I'm gonna use this smaller string to see what happens. So first time we used this big string that circle out there. Now, 
I'm gonna use this small string. But I'm gonna use the same point in the middle. Okay. So now I'm gonna start it over under my finger again. Nicer, huh? I think it's easier to do with a smaller string, maybe. Okay, so when we have a smaller string, what happens to the circle? Makes sense, the circle is smaller too. So this string length decides how big the circle is gonna be. And the reason this is such a nice way of drawing circles is because a circle, when we say circle, what we mean is a curve that has all of its points uh, everywhere along this curve is the exact same distance from the center of the curve or the center point of the circle. So if we have this center point and this length, the only circle we can make is this big circle. If we have that center point and this length, the only circle we can make is this little circle. There's no way without changing either the center point or the length of the string, there's no way to draw a new circle because we've already drawn this circle and this circle. So a circle is completely Defined is what we say, but that means you can know everything about a circle based just on the center point and the length of the string you use to draw it. And the length of this string, the length of the string, let's see, is the same thing as the radius. The radius, and sometimes that's just called R. So all you need to know to draw this exact same circle is to know where this point is and what length of string I used, and you'll get that exact same circle. Now let's see, let, I could measure, I'm gonna borrow one of the, the many rulers I have in my desk from students, using them for inappropriate uses. Anyway, okay, let's see, how long is my string? My string is, mm, almost five centimeters, not quite five centimeters, but we'll, we'll pretend it was five centimeters long. So if I, if I use a string as the same length, we're gonna estimate five centimeters, then we would get this same circle. If we use the same length of string, it doesn't have to be the same string, but if we use the same length of string and the same center, we're gonna get the same circle. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's pretty cool. It's, it's a cool way to draw really nice circles. Um, but I'm gonna use now, just one of these loops. I'm gonna use just one of these loops to draw an even smaller circle than the other one. It'll be bigger than the hand-drawn one, but it'll be smaller than the other really nice circle that I drew. Well, let's see. There we go. That might be the easiest way to do it. You start on one side of your finger, you go around all the way to the other side of your finger. So instead of just starting anywhere, if you start near your finger, you can go all the way around without moving your finger. And that makes it a lot easier. Okay, well, so not only did we get a new nice looking circle, but we also found a new trick that makes it a little bit easier. Awesome. Oh, I pulled the pin over. Mmm, so it, that means I'm, I made a little mistake. Let's see if I can uh, pull the camera. We might have a bit of a collapse here, but because I'm working with it. There we go. <laughs> mm. All right. Oh, you saw the pin move. I think I need to redo this whole thing.